Alrighty guys, so welcome back to my channel. In this episode we are gonna build the Parallax Carousel in React Native using Flatlist and Animated API. Before jumping into VS Code, I'd like to thank you all for subscribing, liking, commenting out, sharing with your friends this channel and also to the Patreons. Uh, it means a lot to me uh, to, to see the gratitude, uh, the support and everything from you guys. So thank you once again. This channel is for you. Uh, and I do my best to answer all of your questions through tutorials and do my best to code everything that you're mentioning down in the comments. The second thing here is that recently I've changed the camera and the setup, not the camera, but the lens, sorry. What? Cut. <laughs> I've changed the lens. Uh, it's, it's a prime lens, it's a better lens. The, the background, it's really blurred. Hopefully it's the, the angle, it's better. Just let me know down in the comments if you feel that I need to change something to the setup here. Camera, it's uh, higher. Because I'm using a, a 27 inch iMac and I didn't know exactly how to position the lens to also show myself and also like being inside the tutorial. I don't know how to explain it. God, even though I think it's a, it's a better lens, maybe the position it's it's wrong. I don't know. Just leave a comment down below. They are here for the tutorial. God, just just say the play the intro, 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 play the intro. Play the intro. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so we are in VS Code here. Uh, I've already uh, created a boilerplate here. The link to, to it is down in the description. So go grab it, add it in your project, run it. Uh, I'm using Expo, uh, but this should work uh, without Expo as well. So if you're, if you're using React Native CLI, it's going to work as well. But just go ahead, grab it, and we'll have the same starting point. So let me walk you through what we have so far. We have some imports here, like animated image, flat list, right? Uh, we are getting the width and height from dimensions. Uh, we assign, uh, we created uh, an item width and item height that we'll be using for the uh, carousel items, right? And we have here a list of images grabbed from Unsplash. And down below, I'm creating the data that we will inject or we will use uh, inside the flat list and I'm iterating over the images. I'm creating a key, a photo, and an avatar URL for the profile that posted the, uh, the image. And first thing, I would like to create the flat list. So let me uh, remove this text here. And first, let's start by rendering here the flat list. And inside the flat list, we'll have data as data. We'll have a key extractor as item and item key and here we'll have a render item and we will grab the item and the index and we'll render a view and inside the view we'll have an image and this image will have a source of URI item This one should be like this. Cool. So nothing is visible uh, and that's because the view doesn't have a width or height. So image should, cannot stretch basically, right? So let's start by adding here some styles. So style will have width and width, right? And the image itself should be, should have a, its own style. So let's create the styles here. We'll have a width of item width, height of item height, and resize mode of cover. So now this, this will make the images visible, right? And I've assigned this uh, to this width, uh, to this view, the width, because the carousel will be, uh, each slide will have uh, full width uh, in size, right? So now this is a vertical uh, carousel, so let's make this horizontal. Uh, we will uh, hide the horizontal indicator and 
we are going to enable the padding. So padding enabled, it's true. And now each slide uh, is going to be uh, uh, full width and is going to snap into place. So this is the paging enabled, right? Now let's let's make this uh, even uh, uh, like even better, right? So we will uh, uh, align the add the let's add here the image with the avatar. So image, and here we'll have a source of URI item avatar URL. Cool, and let's also style this a bit. So we'll have a width of 80 height 80 uh, border radius of 80 all right i think it's uh, too big maybe 60 all right 60 it's working and now the the funny part let's let's align those here in the middle so i'll align to the center and just I'll align the items to the center Right, so everything is positioned to the center of the screen. And now the funny part is that we need to actually, in order to create this parallax effect, we actually need to uh, wrap this image into its own view and add a bigger width to the image itself. So we can move it on the X axis without uh, displaying like uh, non-images, right, background. So let's uh, start by wrapping this view uh, this image into a view all right uh, apply the same width and height so style here with height right but this time we'll overflow hidden the items nothing it's nothing uh, should be visible here but if i'm doing divided by two you notice that the image itself it's somehow trimmed right this is the expected behavior because just imagine I'll do here uh, just 1.4. So I will increase the image size, but notice that only uh, the item width and item height is visible due to this view and overflow hidden. And now we also need to align the items to the center. And uh, in, in this way, we actually uh, increase the width of the image, but we positioned it in the middle. And now we can uh, play around with the translate X in order to create that uh, parallax effect, right? Uh, but before doing that, let's let's style uh, those uh, just a bit here. So let's let's assign here a border radius of 18, border width of 10 border color is going to be white great and we'll have a box shadow so shadow color is going to be black shadow offset is going to be let's say 20 shadow opacity is going to be one shadow radius is going to be 20 and sorry shadow offset is going to be with zero height zero and the reason this is not uh, visible is because of the uh, the overflow hidden. So let's move those uh, uh, those styles into a view and wrap the entire scene here into this view. So another view here. Apply the styles. So style. All right, now it's taking a shape here and a border radius of 18. Uh, and here a border radius of 18. Great, and this time actually we don't need a border color, but instead we can apply a padding of 12 and a background color of white so we somehow simulated right the uh, the border and i think that the border radius it's it's not that great so let's shrink down cool and now let's position this avatar so we'll have here a border width of maybe two border color is going to be white and we'll position this absolute Uh, 
it's actually to the avatar and bottom is going to be zero let's say right but this time this should be inside the view amazing and bottom is going to be actually minus height so minus height divided by two right and right is going to be uh, let's apply 60 so we'll have it here and i think the border radius it's too small maybe six all right this this should work right so this is what we have so far this is how we've uh, styled the uh, the carousel uh, we can actually decrease the opacity here to the shadow so have maybe 0 0.6 0 0.5 all right it's much smoother and maybe increase the border uh, the shadow here the radius all right and now the fun part let's let's make this an animated view right uh, so first thing I will need to create here a scroll X it's a react use ref and a new animated value starting from zero and get a current the reason why I'm using a new animated inside the ref is because uh, react will keep track of this animated value uh, whenever this component will be re-rendered so we will not uh, lose track of it and it's also more performant and this is how React Native Docs it's actually uh, uh, saying to use uh, in, inside the functional component. And with this scroll view inside the flat list, convert this into an animated flat list. And on scroll event is going to be an animated event. And here we will get from native event the content offset, the X, and assign it to the scroll X. And here we will use the native driver, right? So now when we scroll, we assign the, the X value of the flat list to the scroll X, which is an animated value. We can play around with it inside the render item. And here inside the render item, what we will need to do is because this, uh, this image here, you see, this image has more width than uh, the visible slide here we can play around with the translate x whenever we scroll through this carousel so we can create this uh, parallax effect so let's transform this into an animated animated image and create here an input range and the input range is going to be index minus one multiplied by the width index multiplied by the width and index plus one multiplied the width and the reason why i'm using index minus one index and index plus one is to target the how it's going to animate or how it's going to interpolate based on the previous current and next slide so that's why the index basically for each carousel item i would like to apply a different interpolation based on the position inside the flat list Cool. And now here, let's create the translate X, which is a, we will interpolate the scroll X, right? Pass the input range here that we've created above. And then we'll have an output range. And this time I would like to move it a little, right? And I would like to move it 70% of the screen, zero and with multiplied 0.7, right? 0.7. What this is saying is when you're moving to the next item right so we you swipe to the right like this it's going to animate with minus width so it's going to move to the uh, left hand side if you're swiping to the left the image is going to move to the right hopefully this this makes sense in a way or another uh, but mainly this is the idea of uh, having multiple uh, input ranges uh, for for each particular uh, render item and now that we have this uh, this interpolation we can apply to the image so here we will go to the image itself and we'll pass the translate x and now when when i'm going to move the carousel you notice that now i'm moving to the left 
so the image is going to be pushed to the right and it's going to create this parallax effect you see it's it's pure magic is like being a, a window and you actually look inside the 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 mirror the the window that was it guys i hope that you've learned how to create some parallax type of animation uh, applied to the image inside the flat list using animated api if you have any issues don't hesitate to leave a comment down below i'll do my best to answer all of them and help you as much as i can also don't forget to subscribe smash the like button or double smash the dislike button it's also going to help me uh, so thank you once again for subscribing to this channel uh, it means a ton to me and yeah without further ado see you in the next video bye bye